Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Just The Watch. Uh, my name's Dave and I am trying to build the ultimate watch collection, one affordable watch at a time. Um, today we're gonna be taking a look at a skeleton watch for the first time on the channel and I'm kind of excited about that. I've been interested in getting a skeleton watch on the channel uh, for a while and you know, as a, as a watch collector, the idea of having a watch that has the dial removed and all of the inner workings exposed so that you can see them uh, is just such a cool thing. Um, but it, it is a very uh, unique kind of watch and it's one that probably not everybody's going to be into. And so the biggest question I think about this watch, when we look at particularly uh, this one, we're gonna be looking at the Thomas Earnshaw Darwin today. Uh, but it, you know, the biggest question is going to be, are you interested in a skeleton watch? And if you aren't, which many people are not going to be, then this watch is not going to appeal to you at all. Um, so we want to start by looking at that. But first, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the watch, and then we'll get into it. All right, so before we jump into the review of this watch, let's talk a little bit about why you would want a skeleton watch and see if you do want a skeleton watch, because again, that's gonna be the biggest factor in whether or not you're gonna be interested in this watch that we're looking at today. Um, so I think there's three reasons why people are interested in a skeleton watch. The first reason, and probably the original reason why a skeleton watch was invented in the first place, uh, is to show off a, a, an incredibly high-end and intricate watch movement. You know, the whole idea of a skeleton watch is that you know, there, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes and you know, when watchmakers were creating and inventing and innovating uh, these watch movements that had amazing complications and so much time went into putting them together and finishing them and then they would do all this work and then you would slap a dial on front and no one would ever see it and you would never know all that was going on behind the scenes. Uh, you know, at some point, a, a watchmaker decided, you know what, the, the, the behind the scenes and what goes into this movement is so special, so unique, um, that needs to be the whole focus of the watch. And so they remove the dial and they expose all of that to the world. And it's, it's a really interesting concept because in doing so, as soon as you take that dial away and you expose all of the gears and the inner workings of the watch, uh, you do something really weird because you know, the whole point of that movement is to accurately record the time so that people can read it. But as soon as you show the movement off and make that the focus, it becomes a lot more difficult to actually read the watch. And it's a problem that most skeleton watches have. Um, they're not nearly as legible as a standard watch, and that's why most watches don't do that. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an obvious trade-off that you have to make. And as soon as you get a skeleton watch, you know, you're making that trade-off. You're no longer getting a watch that's primarily about telling the time and legibility. It's primarily about something different now. It's primarily about showing off the intricacies of the mechanical movement. And again, this was historically done for high-end movements. It was done for you know, watches um, you know, in, in the luxury category. Um, that's, I think, the, the first and original reason for a skeleton watch, uh, which largely does not apply to a budget skeleton watch because the watch that we're looking at today, it has an off-the-shelf uh, skeletonized Chinese seagull movement, which is a, a decent uh, pleasant to look at watch movement, but it's nothing particularly special. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's not like anything like a high-end luxury watch. And so the, the first reason is, you know, is one that's probably not necessarily going to fly to this. So what are the other two reasons? Um, reason number two kind of carries over, I think, from that whole original idea. Um, and that comes in that, you know, a skeleton watch today is a statement piece. It's a conversation starter. This is a watch that if you have it on your wrist, people are going to notice it because it is such a novelty, because we've kind of come this full circle where now any kind of a mechanical watch movement, even an affordable one, is a novelty that people don't see. I mean, I, I think about, you know, in, in the wild, so to speak, I've never actually seen anybody wearing a skeleton watch. Um, so you can, you know, you can sort of piggyback off of this brand cachet that a lot of these, you know, incredibly expensive, uh, luxury brands do by producing these um, 
skeleton movements, people have kind of associated that with these high-end pieces. And even if you're wearing a budget one, if you're you know out in, in normal life, people who aren't watch enthusiasts are probably going to assume it's much more expensive and much more unique than it likely is. And if that's what you're looking for, this is actually a pretty affordable way to get you know, that kind of a statement piece or conversation starting watch. Um, third reason why you might be interested in a skeleton watch, and probably the one that's most applicable to me, um, is if you are a watch collector and you appreciate the mechanical movement, this is just a great way for you to actually see the inner workings and to get a better understanding of how it works. And for me, it's like, you know, if I'm building a watch collection and I enjoy mechanical watch movements, having a, a skeleton watch in the collection is a cool thing. It's something that I kind of want to have, um, even if it's just for reference. I mean, even if I would rarely wear it, um, just having it there and being able to appreciate that and look inside the movement is just a really cool thing. And so if, if your reason for buying a skeleton watch is numbers two or three, uh, if those things appeal to you and you're willing to take those trade-offs of saying, okay, so I'm not necessarily wearing this primarily to tell the time. I have other motives now for wearing this watch and I'm willing to take those trade-offs and legibility to get a skeleton watch, then this might be something you'd be interested in. So let's, let's take a look specifically then now look at the, the Thomas Earnshaw Darwin. I also want to make sure that I thank uh, Thomas Earnshaw for sending this watch out. Uh, they contacted me and offered to send me a watch for free to review and this is one that I selected and asked them to send in. So big thanks for that. Um, and yeah, just kind of keep that in mind as you listen to the review. This is a watch that I get to keep and did receive for free for review purposes. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the dimensions and specifications of the watch. I think this one has a fairly wearable uh, size. It comes in at 42 millimeters diameter, uh, 22 millimeter lugs for your strap. A little bit tall at about 13 and a half millimeters, including a slightly domed mineral crystal. And then you're getting a 51 millimeter lug to lug. So it's, it's a conservative size, a little oversized for a dress watch. And this definitely, um, I think, is looking at a dress watch uh, style. Um, but I think it's still about where you can kind of get away with it. You know, it's, it's a more modern look. And again, this is definitely a statement piece. And so having it a little bit larger isn't necessarily a bad thing for probably a lot of people who are interested in this watch. Um, but again, the, the highlight and the main focus of this watch is that skeleton movement and inside you have a Siegel uh, caliber TY2809 uh, so it's a Chinese skeleton watch movement uh, which is not a high-end movement by any means and honestly if you're looking at a skeleton watch in this price range there's a really high likelihood it has this same movement or a different Siegel watch movement in it because there's not a lot of other options there. I think Miyota actually makes a skeletonized movement um, that you can find in some watches like Bulova and some other ones, uh, which is I, I would assume is, is a better movement than this one. We'll get more into that uh, later. But again, most of what you're going to find is going to be a, a Siegel skeleton movement like this one. Uh, the movement itself, it's, it's fairly accurate. I've been getting about plus 17 seconds a day, so not spectacular, but not terrible. Again, you know, what, about what I would expect for a movement of this caliber. Uh, it's a fairly noisy movement, about on par with like a, a Miyota 8200 series. You can definitely hear the rotor when it's on wrist. So the Seagull movement, I think it, they did a nice job on the skeletonization. Um, so obviously, uh, when you talk about a skeletonized watch movement, there's more to it than just removing the dial. Um, to make a proper skeletonized movement, you've got to cut out a lot of the movement to expose the inner parts of it. So it's a specialized movement. Um, it's, it's a little bit decorated and it looks nice. It's a very attractive, appealing uh, movement and it does a, a really good job of, again, skeletonizing the, the movement and allowing you to see everything that's going on inside. So from that, from a looks perspective, I think it's, it's a pretty decent one to put in this watch. It looks good. Um, serves its purpose there. Um, from a functionality perspective, I was a little bit disappointed in it. It just feels a little bit rough when you're using it. Like when you're winding it, it doesn't feel as smooth. And if you wind it past its full wind, it starts to, to feel a little bit grating. And you know, I feel like it's not as safe to overwind it as a, you know, like a Seiko H35 or a Miyota 8200 series movement would be. Um, it does have hacking and hand winding, I forgot to mention that, but that's, that's again, great to see on a, a watch of this uh, price range. But an interesting thing about the hacking, um, unfortunately this one, when you push the crown back in, sometimes the second hand actually jumps a couple of seconds, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of hacking a little bit. Um, 
every time you pull the crown out and set the time, there's a little bit of a, a friction when you first start and it feels like the gears aren't quite in alignment and they sort of drop in, sort of clicks into place. And then once it does, even then, uh, the hands don't move completely in sync. And so sometimes the hour hand gets, seems to get a little bit slightly misaligned from the minute hand. Uh, just a little bit, so not much. Again, it's something that you wouldn't necessarily notice unless you were paying close attention. You know, one time I, I had it, uh, the crown out for a while, and then when I was setting it, when I pushed the crown back in, the watch didn't start again. And that, that was not uh, a good feeling. I thought, oh no, I'm, I'm, I broke the watch movement or something just by setting it. And I, you know, it felt kind of more fragile and I didn't know what to do. Um, I tried pulling the crown in and out, I tried winding it, and it just wasn't moving. And finally, I just kind of banged it against my hand and it started going again. I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm good. Um, but yeah, I've never had any other watch movement uh, do that. So this one definitely feels like it's um, not as robust as like a Japanese automatic movement would be. So it's, it's interesting that the main draw of this watch is that skeletonized movement because it looks so cool. Um, but I think that's also the main uh, drawback of this watch, that it has that Chinese seagull movement in it that maybe isn't quite as... Um, yeah, as robust as the, the Japanese movements that I've encountered. Now, that aside, I think the finishing on this watch is really well done. So that's, I think, where the, the trade-off comes in. You're getting a, uh, a, a polished case all the way around. It's, again, a little bit thick, but kind of a bowl shape, a nice, elegant case. Um, the dial, or again, you know, lack thereof, is, is, you know, is really, I think, well done. So what they've done is you have uh, the skeletonized movement that you can see in the middle of the watch and then around it, around the outer edge, they've kind of made a, a, a sort of a, a, I guess you would call it a dial or you know, maybe a big chapter ring, um, but it's got you know, Roman numerals, applied indices, um, a really nice texture to it with these vertical bars going through. Um, yeah, so just really beautiful work that they've done, I think, on that aspect of it. And then it drops down and then you've got the hands and then another chapter ring inside of that. Uh, where you've got the you know the skeleton movement, so there's a lot of depth to it. Uh, it looks really good, and you know the the watch itself feels really high quality, nice stainless steel case. Um, the crown is really cool. It's this nice onion crown with this kind of blue accent mark on the tip of it, uh, which again really classic look, um, very nice looking. Uh, the handset that they put on this is also really nice. Uh, they're kind of Breguet style hands. And originally when I looked at the pictures, I had kind of hoped that uh, they were, you know, sort of the traditional skeletonized hands as well, where you had that cut out at the tip of the hands. Um, but they don't have that. Instead, it's basically, a, a, it's actually a little bit of um, loomed paint that's in there. And again, at first I was a little bit disappointed. I thought, oh, it would have been cooler if they had the actual hole cut out. Um, but no, it's it's much better like this because again, Legibility is very difficult on any skeleton movement, and you really need to have something that contrasts. And a lot of times, you know, catching it in the glare, I'll have a really hard time finding the hands, but I'll be able to see those dots. Um, they they are loomed. Um, pop up a, a loom shot here so you can see. It's it's not really practical to use in the dark. I guess it's a nice touch that if they're going to have to include some paint for legibility, they might as well make it loomed paint. But really, in the dark. You see two faint dots and that's it. And it's really hard to tell even which one's the hour hand and which one's the minute hand. And they don't let, the loom doesn't last very long. So it, it, it's, a, it's a dress watch. It's kind of a, a bonus that there is any loom in there at all. Additionally, the band was uh, so kind of surprised me as well. The watch band is a, it's a genuine leather band. So it's one of the best genuine leather bands that I've come across. Um, it's a crocodile embossed uh, leather band, but it, again, it, it feels great. You know, typically I don't like crocodile embossed bands because they kind of, tend to look cheap and feel a little bit plastically, plasticky. This one doesn't. This one feels great. It feels great on the wrist. It feels nice and supple. Um, it's just, a, again, one of the, the best uh, crocodile embossed straps that I've come across. Um, they've done a good job on the hardware as well. Uh, particularly the buckle looks really cool. It's, you know, they've kind of taken it and shaped it in the shape of an E for Earnshaw, uh, which is very unique. It's nice to see that uh, kind of personalized touch. It's obviously been a signed buckle. Um, you're also getting a, the Earnshaw logo engraved on the side of the case, which, you know, I'm not a particular fan of that, but it's nice to see them putting those extra touches there. Um, one challenge I did have with the buckle is it is a little bit oversized, and I did find it catching, like sometimes when I was wearing it on like my pocket and things like that. If I didn't have it um, on my wrist really tightly, if I wore it a little bit looser, it tended to uh, catch on things more. So that's another thing to kind of keep in mind there. 
So let's talk about the price because that's another kind of controversial issue of this one. Um, the retail price that they have this listed for on the Thomas Earnshaw website is in, in pounds, but roughly it's about $400. Um, personally, I think $400 is way too much to pay for this watch. I think at that price range, you would definitely want to see a better movement in this. You would want to see a sapphire crystal um, and maybe some other upgrades in there. But they have it on sale right now, and it seems like I think they run these kinds of sales on this fairly frequently for $150. Now, at $150, I think that's actually a really good value for this watch. Um, so, yes, there's a big difference between $150 and $400. At $400, I think it's definitely overpriced. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, at 150, I think I think that's a deal. Um, I, and so I, I I would say you know if if I were going to price this watch, I would say retail price for this should be around 250. That would be I think the upper end of what would be reasonable to pay for this. And it kind of reflects that in gray market prices. If you look on Amazon, you're going to find this one for I think anywhere from around 160 dollars um, to around 250 dollars. Amazon has a couple of them as well. So if the sale is over and you're still looking for it, if they don't have it on sale right now. Um, definitely check on Amazon and maybe other places if you're interested in this. You can probably find it for a lot cheaper than the $400 retail price. Um, but yeah, again, I, I think at $150, which you can get at right now, is a great deal. So I would definitely recommend you um, checking that out at their website. I think it's on sale for the, about a week or so. Um, I found a discount code that will give you an extra 5% off, off of the sale price. Um, so it'll knock it down even a little bit more. Uh, so I'll put that down in the description as well. Yeah, so all that said, I think if you're looking for kind of a budget skeleton watch to have in your collection, um, I think this is a good option. I think this is a really interesting uh, looking watch. You get to appreciate the skeletonized watch movement and the finishing on it is great. Uh, really high quality feel other than the movement. Um, ironically, again, the movement being the, the main attraction to it. Um, yeah, it, it, the movement is both the uh, greatest selling point and the biggest weakness of this watch. Uh, but again, that's very typical of what you're going to find in this price range. You're almost always going to find almost this exact Seagull Chinese movement uh, in skeleton watches uh, in this price range. Again, um, exceptions would be Bulova. I found a couple of Bulova watches that use a Miyota movement that are in similar prices. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll drop some links to those as well, and you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, that will wrap up the review for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.